Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy with, oh my gosh, another brush -o video. Yeah, I know, I'm just obsessed with this stuff. But I'm also using the Mod Hex die, which a bunch of people, when I sneak peek this, said they've never seen before. So yay for showing you some new die that you just have to have in your collection, because it's really cool. I made a line on the back to help myself know what straight is, because when you're looking at the back of a die, it's kind of tough to tell. And then I taped it down so I could run it through my die cutter and pop out the little parts on the inside. I'm gonna do three different techniques with the brush out, just three different looks with one color on each one for the background. Just so you can see, you don't have to have a million colors to get some really cool looks. So on this one, I've sprayed the water on first and I'm just shaking on this gamboge color and letting it move across the, the card. And this one, I wanted to have a lot of big splash of color, so I just added some extra water and I'm gonna let it dry and not touch it. This next one, I'm just gonna tap on some red. I wanted to see if I could do a little less, so keep the color really intensely right around the hexes and let just a little bit of that flow out to the edges. But I wanted to get more of that intense red right around them, so I spritzed just inside the hexagon shapes and then dabbed off on the rest so that it would get sort of this light red and pink color as it moved out. And of course my favorite, the black. I've used this a couple times and I'm probably gonna have to buy this one again before I run out of any of the other colors because I'm using it all the time. But look at all that delicious color that comes out of the black. As you add more water to it, it turns more black. But out on the edges, when it's just little tiny bits of color, they just get all different kinds of beautiful colors. There's rust and blues and purples. And every single time I use it, I just feel like I see different beautiful colors showing up in it. And I wanted to see what would happen if I started going in more with the paper towel to start removing some of that excess. And if I went right over top of it, I get some of the brush out onto the paper towel so I can tap off as well and add some more texture outside of it. But then it also meant that I softened all that stuff in the middle and I wanted more of that brush -o texture back. So while it was damp, not soaking wet, I added just a little bit more powder and then set that aside to dry. So while those are drying, I'm taking one of the sets of the insides of the hexes and I'm just going to put some different colors on each one. And you can do them all in one color and use that with the brush -o in another color in the background or you could even do a white card with just these pops of color on all the little hexes. That would even be beautiful on a nice, clean and simple card. Graphic dies like this are just a lot of fun because you can do some really fun inset techniques, do a little bit of stuff with some, uh, some dimension that I'll show you and just some really sweet color. So I'm gonna spray on some water so that each one of these gets a little more intense in its color and then I pick them up and I put them on a piece of scratch paper so they would dry. And now I'm going to prepare my card bases by putting on some Be Creative tape. This is the one and a half inch tape. And I wanna cover the whole surface with it. You could get the stuff that's in sheets as well and just cover it with the sheet. But uh, what I did was take the little excess piece that I had off the edge here and just turn it and then I could just cut little slivers to fill up that top side. But the reason I wanted all of this on there is I'm going to nest these hexes back into the die cut shape that I already have here. So I need to have some adhesive all along that and then I don't have to put any adhesive on the back of my little hexes. So I press it all down and trim off the edge because my watercolor paper was bigger than my card base. And then just piece all of these back in. And of course there's a time lapse here. It took them a little while to dry. This brush -o, when you let it air dry does take a while so you could if you wish use a heat tool but on the, the little tiny pieces they would blow away so I actually did let them air dry and I'm just going to turn the pieces around until they look what I like what I want them to look on the card itself and then for the sentiment I have this piece that I've tucked underneath the left hand side and cut a banner for the right hand side you're absolutely awesome. No, seriously, you are. That is seriously a sentiment that I am going to be using a ton. I'm gonna to try not to use it in every video, okay? I'll try to hold myself back, 
But when I make cards just for me that aren't in videos, I'm going to be using that quite a bit. Next, I have the same thing that I've done to prepare for this red one, and it's on a red card base. And I'm putting dimensional adhesive behind some of the pieces, and other pieces are going to nest into their little respective places. And that'll add a little, little dimension to certain parts, but not to others. I started off just wanting to do some Wink of Stella across all of the hex pieces, and I accidentally touched the Wink of Stella brush to the brush -o, and I discovered that I pulled in a little bit of color. At first I went, oh no, I wrecked it. And then I went, wait a minute, look, it looks like stone. If you just pick up that brush -o that's already dry, it reactivates with the Wink of Stella. And so now I get not only a little bit of shimmer on it, but if I just kind of scribble with the brush -o, or with the, the brush -o, with my Wink of Stella pen, it just starts to make this really beautiful looking stone. So how cool is that for an accidental effect? When I thought I was going to be doing one thing, I created something entirely different. And this is how it looked on the, the card. I even did a little bit of that same look on the right hand side of that banner just to tie that together with the rest of the card. And finally, let's make a shaker out of this one with the black. So I've put some, uh, some acetate onto the back of the hex die part that's cut out. And I'm going to run some dimensional adhesive all the way around the entire, the whole shape, that whole open shape, because I want the part that's going to be inside the shaker to stay within that area. I don't want it to shake behind the rest of the card because that would be wasting all that beautiful shaker stuff. So I've made a little trail all the way around it. You want to make sure I'm going to be using glitter for the inside of my shaker. If you're using beads, it's not as crucial, but I want to make sure I seal every single one of those little spots in between all of my little pieces of dimensional adhesive. Then I added more to the rest of the card so the whole panel will pop. And I have a little piece, a little scrap of some silver metallic paper, some silver glitter paper. And I'm just going to put my glitter, this is the Hero Arts Prima Glitter, and put it on top of this, this whole panel on top of the glitter and press it all down really good and then give it a little shake and look at all that beautiful sealed in not leaking all over the place glitter yay for things that don't make a mess and again same sentiment same design but a totally different look just because I've used different colors and a different technique for the card itself so if you want to see some more brush -o, here's some more brush -o for those who are just as addicted as me. And I've also started a playlist, so each one of these will take you to a playlist if you want to just keep watching as you go. Oh my gosh, this stuff is fun. I'll talk to you guys later. All the supplies are linked in the doobly-doo. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.